With the US Open coming up, why was it important for you to partner with Gillette? Yeah, I mean, Gillette's got a long history with golf. Um, you know, they, I'm loving what they're doing uh, with the 72 club that they've got coming up. Um, it'd be fun, basically, you know, the whole idea behind it is, you know, that everyone's goal is to try to shoot even par at some point in their life. And, you know, obviously some of us get close and some of us do better and some of us never get close, but it's all about improving. And, um, you know, obviously in these hot summers, um, you know, being smelling good and being fresh is also part of it. You know, we've got some long days out there on the golf course. So, um, you know, I'm a lifetime Gillette guy underneath it all. So I was super excited when uh, when I got the call that we were going to partner. You've made almost $2 million in these three major championships you played in. What is it like when that direct deposit hits? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it's humbling. It's definitely different after spending a year and a half on the Corn Ferry Tour and you know, finishing in the top 25 and making a couple thousand bucks and feeling like I couldn't spend it fast enough. So it's uh, <laughs> it's definitely uh, definitely different. We're approaching the 10 year anniversary of Rory's crazy run at the U.S. Open. He was only 22. I'm sure we can expect the same for you. But um, in all honesty, what's been the secret to your success so early on um, in your career at majors? Yeah, you know, I think it's honestly just the fact that the, I just know the courses are that hard. And I know that, you know, it's so easy to make mistakes. So, you know, one of my favorite lines ever comes from Lee Trevino, where he just said like, hey, you got water on the left and you got OB right. If you're going to hit one in the water OB, go ahead and get your money's worth. I mean, go ahead and send it on out there as far as you can and, and leave nothing behind. And I think that attitude is kind of carried over into all the majors where you know, every single golf hole in a U.S. Open specifically, you're kind of fighting for your life. And the same thing with Kiowa. Um, you know, I think the fact that, um, you know, these just places are so hard and, you know, my ball striking just, I keep giving myself chances in the week that I make a bunch of putts are usually the weeks where I contend. Now we got to talk to you a little bit about Bryson DeChambeau. During uh, COVID, of course, he drank 9,000 protein shakes. He gained about 40 pounds. I feel like you and Bryson might have different diets. Is that true, do you think? <laughs> it's, yes and no, because I'm not afraid to have a four or 5,000 calorie day. <laughs> the difference is I'm just a high, high metabolism guy. So yeah, we've, we're, I'm not saying I'm gonna throw on 40 pounds anytime soon, but obviously having some reserves when you're playing 27 to 30 weeks a year is definitely good. But no, you will not be seeing me going into an XL shirt anytime soon. You're so skinny and you're such a good shape. Do you have what is your workout regimen like? Are you pumping iron like Brooks is, or are you spending all your time on the elliptical? Where are you at in there? Yeah, no, I'm kind of more of a functional guy. I mean, Dan Goddard has been my trainer for the last couple of years. He works with Jordan um, or Jordan Speeth. So he's, yeah, you know, I see him when I'm at home five days a week. You know, he travels probably six or seven times a year. Um, you know, the big thing, especially, you know, being in Texas where, you know, you get a hundred, 105 is just be able to handle it and, you know, handle the heat. And so, um, you know, I, I try to stay balanced. Trust me, there's some days where I feel like I need to be lifting more than some 25 pound weights, especially when I'm seeing, you know, Brooks throw up, you know, 225 before he goes out and wins majors. So, but, uh, obviously what I've been doing has been working, so we're not going to try to change too much. We have to ask you what your reaction was to the Brooks meme. What did you think about that when you saw it? I, I could not believe it. As a golf fan, it's fun to watch. And hopefully, uh, if I'm able to play with those guys on a Ryder Cup team, maybe we might have to have a couple beers together and kind of quell it just for like four days. After that, you guys can go back to being being yourselves. I was gonna say, like, what's it like in the locker rooms? What are you guys? What are the players thinking of this this feud that's developed between two of the best players in the world right now? Uh, it's different. I mean, you know, I think if anything, a lot of the guys are kind of more laughing at it. I mean, you know, it's just. At least both of them now, they're even though that you know, obviously they have their differences, they're able to poke fun at it on social media. It's not like some knockdown drag out. So, you know, I think it's I think it's at a point now where it's only getting funnier and funnier. So hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully we can just keep it funny. What if you got paired up with those two at the US Open? It's those two and you. What do you, what do, you do on the first tee to break up yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I don't. I think it would be funny though, because I mean, I kind of look like both of their little brothers, so I, mean, <laughs> I, I would pro probably have to do something like that. But I've known Bryson through amateur golf, and uh, I've only played with Brooks once. But yeah, I have a feeling uh, my caddy and I, Ryan, we'd definitely have a little fun with it. We'd probably try to make it awkward on purpose, just so we could kind of break the ice, you know. We, we would love to play a game with you. Given your fame and your first appearance in Happy Gilmore, we saw the tweet. <laughs> um, congratulations on that. I would have probably fangirled a little bit, but we are planning a remake because that's what Hollywood does. So we're going to <laughs> cast the new Happy Gilmore. So let's start off with the golfers. Are you ready? We want you to fill uh, these roles for us. Okay, oh so man. first one, Happy Gilmore. I almost feel like Kevin Kisner could play it just because he's so funny and they kind of have the same voice, but I feel like it's got to be a Canadian if it's like a golfer. <laughs> but it's like, if you could put Kevin Kisner with like Corey Connor's body, I think that would be like your perfect marriage. What about Harry Hicks? I think Harry Hicks would be really good. Oh my God. Harry, <laughs> Harry, Harry could play every single person in that movie if you wanted to. Oh, he's, uh, there's nobody like him. What about Shooter McGavin? <laughs> probably Phil. Yes, that was my point. <laughs> yeah, probably Phil. I, cause I, you know, like I played a practice round with Phil uh, during the PGA week. And, and so it was just a little nine hole match, Zach Johnson and I against uh, Phil and uh, uh, Steve Stricker. And Phil, Phil and Steve were three up through three on us and he, I'm sure you guys saw it. He said it loud enough so everyone could hear. He said, man, I thought we would have been more up by now. And I'm just like, unbelievable. My first taste of Phil. That's, that sounds like something Shooter would say. Yeah. I love that. Last one for you, Will, before we let you go. Bob Barker, a celebrity who just get in the mix on the course and put up a good fight. Who would you, <laughs> <laughs> who would you have play him? I'm going to go... Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. I'm actually going to say Jason Bone because, oh, yeah, he's classic. because he is so funny. He's one of my favorite guys that I've ever played with. I, I know I've only been out for a couple of years, but he's a guy that can hold his own. He kind of treat, he treats me like I'm like one of his kids. And so <laughs> I think he could play the Bob Barker role pretty well. It'd have to be someone who's out on the senior tour if, if we were to, or at least retired, but I mean, he's he's awesome. And then Lee Trevino could play Lee Trevino. How about that? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. See, who even needs Hollywood casting? We've got you for this. We don't even need it. We did the problem for them. <laughs> but thank you so much, it. Will. You've been awesome. Thank you. We appreciate you. Hey, sports fans, if you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.